Hello and welcome all to the Royal Bride Godmother Podcast. My name is Grace. I am your spiritual coach, your spiritual godmother, beloved, and your beloved sister in our precious Lord Jesus Christ. I'd not be here if it were not for my wonderful Lord and Savior. Can we just ooh, can we just worship our Lord Jesus Christ? Worship our Father God of lights. Glory be to God. Thank you so much, beloved, for joining me. Today, we are going to talk about, we're going to continue our talk on the narcissist and your spirit series. And I've been covering these topics in Spanish currently, but of course, I'm not going to uh, leave out my my English speakers. Glory be to God for each and every one of you. I want to welcome, by the way, all of those who have subscribed on YouTube. Thank you so much for your support, your likes, your shares, beloved. Everything that you do to share these videos, to like these videos, I mean, just even liking a video is already getting something done in the kingdom of the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. So today we're going to talk about why we fell hook, line, and sinker into that narcissist net. Now, it's very important. I want to give a disclaimer here. Two things, actually. We're speaking about narcissists. We are talking, we're not, we're not um, exclusively um, talking about people with NPD. We are also including people who have narcissistic tendencies, covert, malignant, malignants, grandiose, uh, the somatic types. There's just so many NPDs out there, but uh, because I am not a psychologist, I do not diagnose anybody on this program. We talk about the tactics, those textbook uh, behaviors of narcissists. Now, some people have the tendencies, and some others are toxic personalities, borderlines, cluster Bs, and so. But we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about how narcissists or people with narcissistic tendencies are time stealers, time wasters. But narcissistic people are needy on all levels for their supply. They need their supply. I mean, this is a basic need that drives them. They need that that precious supply. So supply fuels the narcissistic person. Now, when you met them, it could have been a a toxic personality who said this to you or a, a covert narcissist maybe who said this to you. But in my experience, this is what they have said. I need my daily fix of you. It's like you're their drug. But see, it is a drug addiction. And it is not just, it's not just you are their drug. They become your drug also. It's a drug addiction. You got the stuff they need. You got the stuff they want. But they got the stuff we want. And then it turns into the stuff we need. All right. So many codependent people enter into narcissistic abuse. They, they don't even, we don't even realize when we're going into uh, narcissistic abuse. It just begins to happen. If we're codependent, we really don't measure boundaries. We just get on that high roll. That we get on that high, the bandwagon. It hasn't become a roller coaster yet. It becomes a like it's a bandwagon. We get on that high. We're feeling good. We're on cloud nine. We got the dopamine. That toxic exchange of chemicals. Both narcissist and victim are codependents in this toxic exchange of chemicals. And these are also, by the way, not just. Um, uh, these are also uh, spiritual chemicals. So when you met them, they probably told you how you saved them somehow from their depression, their anger, their sadness. Um, But it's important to realize, if we're going to help ourselves out here, it's important to realize that we both narcissists and codependents are fuel junkies. So especially when we enter into the toxic exchange, and that's all really it is. It's a transaction. 
We receive supply, they receive supply, they receive fuel from us, and we, we, we receive fuel from them. So what's very important here to remember, if you remember nothing that I say tonight, remember this, never look to anybody to be, to be anybody's savior. Do not look to be anybody's savior, but your own. Now, for those of us who are here, who are kingdom believers or kingdom fighters, we have but one savior and that is Jesus Christ. But never out, outside of Jesus Christ, outside of our precious Lord and savior, we should not be looking to be anybody's savior but our own, which means right now, if you find yourself in some kind of toxic exchange, some kind of, um, let's say a situation ship, friends with benefits, and you know, this thing's not working for you. It's causing you harm. You got to save yourself. You got to rescue yourself out of there. Of course, it's going to take steps that you will need to take, but You can't be trying to save somebody else, especially somebody who doesn't want to be saved. In fact, narcissists will turn out, they'll make it seem like they appreciate and they love you for you saving them, but it really, they despise you. And the more you try to save them, the more they will resent you for it. Now, we make the mistake sometimes trying to be somebody's savior because we believe that this will give us some sort of um, validation. Now, in my experience, I was trying to be the narcissist savior because, like I said, we must be honest with ourselves, I did not have good self-esteem. I didn't have anything interesting going for myself other than my job, being the little hamster on a wheel. I was also a um, guardian and mentor to two children at the time. And that was something that filled my time and fulfilled me. But I needed to do something for myself, which I wasn't doing. So I was doing this. I was doing that. I was helping others. And that helping others gave me a sense of meaning. But I was still unhappy and telling myself nothing was missing while something obviously was missing. I could feel there was. I just didn't make the time. I didn't make the effort to discover what exactly was missing. I had hidden behind my job and helping to raise the two, the two children and had chosen not to think about my needs, my wants, what I really uh, needed, wanted out of life, my purpose. We all have life purpose. Um, I, in a way, was finding validation through through the two kids that I was taking care of at the time. Now, I soon learned, though, during this this uh, this toxic exchange and abuse, that you cannot ascribe your purpose to other individuals. You should never try to obtain validation through others no matter how noble the cause may be. So I saw myself, I can look in retrospect, I was a hamster on a wheel, going nowhere, having a dead-end job, doing things for others, didn't give me much time to even think about my life, my choices, my desires. But what's more, and we have to take accountability, I chose to ignore my needs, my wants. So I had no hobbies. Yeah, sounds pathetic. Because my job was physically draining, emotionally draining, mentally draining, and I'll tell you, even spiritually draining. And I chose to work overtime a lot in those days. Um, But notice the words I am using here. I am using one word, choice. I chose. You choose. No one puts a gun to our heads. So I chose not to consider my needs so important as the needs of others. Now, it also came from a constant thing I heard in my house as I was growing up, that it's selfish to put your needs before the needs of others. And I heard this, it was like a broken record, and I, I, I ended up believing it. This is why it's so important that we have to renew our mindsets. No, we... Um, You're not being selfish when you put your needs before others. 
what is selfish is not realizing that you need to take care of you or as they say, do you so that you can take better care of others. What I never heard or knew in my household was that not investing in or taking care of you puts you at risk of a predator because you have not invested in your self-esteem, in your self-care, in your self-love, in your self-worth, and in your self-introspection, in your physical, spiritual, mental, emotional care. Listen, we are human beings. We are not machines. Contrary to what the narcissist believes, we are not appliances. We are not these rocks. We don't have um, uh, hardened hearts, you know. We are physical, spiritual, mental, emotional beings. We need to hit this thing, hit our self-care, our self-love, our everything from all sides. Physical, spiritual, mental, emotional. Now, I grew up neglecting all of these things, even, even my spiritual needs, honestly, because even though I was raised in religion, I wasn't addressing my actual spirituality. So when I entered the real world, I was, my values, my principles, everything was really just tacked on. It wasn't well grounded. There was no root to take, uh, it, there was no um, foundation so I was unprepared to face the real world. It's like the empress had no clothes, so to speak. I want to ask you, how many emperors and empresses are out there stark, naked? So then I met a narcissist. And of course, they flatter you. They make you feel special. And suddenly, it feels that you're important to somebody who understands you, who gets you, you understand each other. And especially if they are intelligent, poetic, smart, articulate, and they're eloquent, they ask the right questions because they do. They have like this, it's like they have a questionnaire ready, prepared for you. Now, I want to say this, there is a red flag here. Be careful. Be careful when someone seems to ask all the right questions. When something seems too good to be true, Kind of, don't be so quick to jump into that thing. Now, when somebody's asking all the right questions, unless that's your life coach, your counselor, a psychologist, therapist, please do be careful with that list of interrogatives. I mean, in a lawsuit, opposing parties use these to get information they need to help them win the case. You don't want to let the narcissist win the case. You know, with a narcissist, interrogatives are meant to fish for information, to hook you, hook you. They ask questions premeditatively, uh, pre um, premeditatively. There are no accidents with a narcissist. They do have objectives. They have a drive. And even if these are destructive towards their victims, even if these objectives will destroy their victims... All they care about is their supply, their needs, what they need in that moment in time. And each time that we reveal another piece of the puzzle of us to them, we give them, we hand over more secrets, more virtue, more ammo. Now, time is of the essence to a narcissist because they do need supply to fuel them and fast. Now, it doesn't mean not all narcissists will have a run out of patience very quickly. Some narcissists are very, um, they, they can wait. But garden variety narcissists, the lazy types, they tend to uh, extend their hand uh, up on that apple tree. And if that, if that apple doesn't, if it isn't uh, low enough, they'll kind of just like walk away from it. They're not going to uh, put up a fight with the thing. But they are still there are still those types that will persist. And in my experience, I've had types that have persisted because they are persistent. So the, we so the tactic is to weave, uh, 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 weave this web of charm and deceit and flattery where they stay on your mind 24-7. This is how they overpower your senses. 
They assault your senses. It's like um, sensory overload. They turn into your idol in, in a way. And you, make no mistake, also turn into their idol. And if we're honest with ourselves, some of us, that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to be idolized. We wanted to feel loved, adored, needed, and special to somebody. But also, some of us wanted to feel idolized. This is something that nar- some narcissists, I mean, narcissists and some victims have do have in common. And this stems for, from many things, for many reasons, perhaps because we didn't feel appreciated, loved, encouraged uh, at home, our jobs, by our peers. There's many reasons as to why a victim will, will want this. But what I discovered, beloved, is that no one owes you this. No one owes you anything. You owe it to yourself to love you, flaws and all. And it's a process. And it comes through deep introspection, taking personal accountability. Some people even need counseling to talk things out, therapy to figure some things out from their past. Some may need coaching to set uh, goals, to move forward, to find out where the knot started to appear, where that tape got all crinkled up, where that record got scratched. Then after discovering where the roots of the cause are, The question is, what can we do to salvage that tree? Set goals towards getting you on the path towards healing, towards moving forward, towards succeeding. Because make no mistake, empaths do not do not stay behind. Once you are out of the the abuse, once and it doesn't matter how long it takes, if it take if it took three years to 15 to 27 years, however long it takes, if you come out, you come out and you see the light at the end of the tunnel, the empath always ascends. The next step is ascension. You come out changed from the hell you go through. But narcissists stay behind. What we have to do is move on on our path towards healing. When we don't take the time to even ask ourselves, though, why? Why do I keep attracting these individuals? Why do I keep trying to please everyone? Why do I have these codependent tendencies? Yeah, there is for sure a demonic, a huge demonic and spiritual component to all of this. And because there is, because the earliest assaults did begin in your spirit, the breaches began in your spirit, this infiltrated your mind and took root in your soul. This is why, even more importantly, we have to begin to ask ourselves those important, crucial questions in life. So that $60 million question isn't if a tree falls in the forest and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? It's why do I think this way? Why do I keep doing the same thing? Why do I keep repeating the same patterns? Why do I keep attracting narcissists? What is going on? What happened in my childhood, perhaps, in my past that has me thinking that I can't do better, that I can't meet anyone better, that I, that I don't deserve any better. These are questions. These are all questions that um, we can ask ourselves. Now, I want to give you guys an illustration. For those of you who are um, 90s uh, children <laughs> like me, uh, remember when you had those VCRs, those, those cassette players in nineties, eighties cassette players, remember when that VHS or the tape, it would show signs of damage. And, um, well, I remember ruined my good movie. You know, I used, I used to, we used to have home alone and, uh, oh, for years I couldn't watch the ending to home alone. Cause, uh, our VHS, it would just eject the, uh, the, uh, the VCR would eject the VHS. So there I was, couldn't figure out the ending to home alone until very recently. <laughs> I watched home alone for like the first time in so many, in so long. So there you are watching your favorite movie. Then that VHS stops or that song starts to sound like the cassette needs an exorcism. Yeah. Then you pop that VHS out, you blow on it, you hit the VCR a few times, you know, you think, it, you think it's the VCR, pop that VHS back in and still nothing. So 
I mean, listen, if that happened with a man-made machine and object, imagine what complexities lie in you, beloved. You who are fearfully and wonderfully made, man or woman who is made in the image and the likeness of the almighty creator, Jehovah God. So I got news for you. Blowing on the tape this time won't work and hitting the VCR won't work. It's an internal work that we must do. So chances are you'll need to take the VCR apart. You'll have to dismantle it piece by piece. That's why some people do need therapists, ther- uh, therapist, therapy. Others need counselors. Others need both. Whatever you need. Others may only require a life coach, a spiritual coach. Bottom line, bottom line here. We owe it to ourselves to take, to begin to start taking apart that VCR and inspecting the situation. Listen, you were not born, contrary to what the narcissist told you, you were not born defective. But you know what is defective? Is the software installed. Those applications got to go. So ask yourself, why do you feel the need to be special to someone else? Because there are people out there, NPDs or not, who are masters at generating this feeling within others, this neediness. I heard this one time, somebody said this and I really liked it. Um, And I forgot who said it, but it said it along the lines of resent the feeling of, um, how did he say it? To resent when somebody is trying to make you feel needy because you can catch on to this, you know, these little mind games. If we are alert, if we're not falling asleep, if we are not just falling into love like that, we can catch on, especially as empaths. We have a kind of sensor for subtleties in our environment. Glory be to God, where we can pick up on these things. If we are not fully just dumbfounded, So this is why we cannot allow our guard. We cannot um, um, lower our guard. So if you already feel needy, of feeling needed, then that mindset and energy of feeling you're putting out there will inevitably attract an emotional and spiritual predator. Perhaps not a narcissist, but an emotional or spiritual predator nonetheless. Beware of this, beloved. Beware of this need to feel, uh, feeling special to others. You are special. You are nobody's savior, but your own. Jesus Christ being our Lord and Savior. Yes, he is our Lord and Savior. God wants us to be happy, confident, with a good self-esteem, enjoying the life He gave us to live in our purpose. He did not give you and me a body, an incredible, brilliant mind, fearfully and wonderfully made to neglect it and put it on the back burner to meet someone else's needs and demands. Because narcissists are demanding. If you are standing there, sitting there, twiddling your thumbs and waiting for somebody to come and get you to tell you you're special and unique and make you feel like you're the center of the universe. Ask yourself, why? Listen, I was trying to be a help to others when I wasn't even a help to me. I didn't love me. I didn't appreciate me or care for me. Yeah, sure, I could do the external stuff. Grace could dress it up for sure. Talk to anybody who who knew me at the time. I could dress it up. I could throw on the fake lashes. I could throw on the hair. I could throw on the, the, all that makeup. My skin will be glowing. You know what I mean? But on the inside, I was, it was abysmal. I, was, it was, I just felt dismal. Everything I did was external. I did that external maintenance. I did. And I made it look good. But that's not all that comprises self-love or self-appreciation or self-respect. 
That's why we do have to come to a point where we do have to be honest with ourselves. Now, when I met the narcissist, my priorities, they went askew, cockeyed. Little by little, I gave the narcissist more and more because see, you give them a little bit, they, they take more. And the more you give, the more they take. So you give them an inch, they take a yard, you give more and more and more time. And then I didn't even give my family time anymore. There was conflict in my family. I, I was fighting with my family members. And the more time I gave the narcissist, listen, the more needy I became of the fuel that the narcissist provided. Why? Because through intermittent reinforcement, they play this game very well, but it's textbook material. Once we get it down, they're going to have to figure out another way to, to uh, change up their tactics. What do they do? Intermittent reinforcement, hot and cold. They give you the silent treatment. That makes you more needy for them. As it is, you're already a codependent when you start out. They do demand your time. They're, 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 they're depending on the fuel that you give them. But you're also depending on the fuel they give you. But you don't need anybody's fuel. See, you're not an empty creature like they are. What you must do is look within introspection, ask yourself the questions that you've been fearing to ask yourself. Because if we don't do the mind work, if we don't shift our mindsets, if we don't address those things, maybe there's unforgiveness in us also that's not allowing us to, to come out of it. The unforgiveness, let me tell you something about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness can clog you up spiritually, beloved. Unforgiveness. And yes, this means forgiving the narcissist, but also forgiving yourself for the things that you did during the toxic exchange. Some of us did things that we can't even tell anybody and only God knows. Beloved, God forgives you, but you must forgive yourself. And you also must forgive the narcissist. Beloved, time is of the essence. Narcissists demand your time and you must protect your time. Time is the currency of your life. So all the time you gave to them, it's gone. I gave... A couple years, and almost, almost, a, almost a few more years, um, because once you leave, they, at the beginning, they still live rent free in your mind. It's due to the soul um, tie. So deprogramming and cleansing yourself from all this is a process. But that's where the real work begins. Once you come out of it, that is where the real work. That's when the real work starts. But the real work also involves you going within, deprogramming, cleansing, shifting your mindset. Believe me, there is a really bright light at the end of this pitch black abysmal tunnel, beloved. But what's important here is that we're a community. We're all at different stages in healing in the process some of us are in the process of getting out. Others are practicing limited contact, zero contact, no contact. Whatever you need to do to help you, to do you. But what matters is that we help each other, beloved. Thank you so much for listening, beloved. That concludes tonight's episode. Please take this, meditate on it, and... If you find something of value, please share it like the video, beloved. Remember, once you're out of the narcissist mind games, the fun house of the narcissist, then the real work begins. But the healing process takes time. Your time. The time you gave to the narcissist, it's gone. Now it's time for you. It is all about you. 
When you were in there, it was all about them. Now it's all about you, you and God. And you can do all things through Christ the Lord, which strengthens you, beloved. He strengthens us. He gives us the wings to fly. We don't, we're not phoenix rising from the ashes. No, we are eagles. Narcissists stay behind, but we ascend. And we help others along the way, beloved. I'm Grace, your spiritual coach, spiritual godmother. I love you all so very, very much. And until we speak again, Jesus Christ is King of kings, Lord of lords, Alpha, Omega, forever and ever. Shalom. Salah.